In 2 Corinthians 5.19, the Bible says, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and that he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. A wise man once said to me, if you haven't been accused of teaching a license to sin, then you're not teaching the truth about forgiveness. Years ago, I was posting this on social media, and a friend of mine who was a Christian responded with, were well, you teaching a license to sin? When I asked her to explain how I was doing that, and that she had been watching me for years, and I hadn't said anything along those lines about sin being okay, or, or that sin wasn't wicked, or God was encouraging us to sin, she was like, well, I wasn't talking to you. I meant, I meant you know, just your message. And I think what it was is that when you hear this truth about forgiveness, you automatically think that the person saying the message is the one at fault. We never look at what we understand about the gospel, what we understand about what the Bible says. So the immediate reaction is always, oh, you're teaching universalism or you're teaching that sin is okay and sin's not wicked when that's the furthest thing from the truth. But what it is is that oftentimes these people who are saying that you're teaching a license to sin, that I'm teaching a license to sin for teaching this, is that they don't understand the fullness of the gospel. They understand a half gospel. Now, what do I mean by a half gospel? What I mean is that they, they believe something along the lines that, well, Jesus died for my sins so that when I die, I get to go to heaven. Well, that's not wrong. It's incomplete. Well, it's incomplete because Jesus took away the sins of the world, but the problem between man and God is not that we're sinners in need of forgiveness. The problem between man and God is that we are spiritually dead and need his life. You see, back in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis 2-7, God said he breathed the life, his life into Adam, and Adam became a living being. Well, he also told Adam that on the day that you eat of the forbidden tree, you eat the forbidden fruit, then you shall surely die. Well, we know that Adam didn't die Physically, on the day he ate the fruit, he lived to be 930 years old. Well, what kind of death did Adam experience? He experienced a spiritual death. And because him and Eve did not have any children at the time, the children that they did have eventually, and whom we are descendants of, were born in Adam's image and his likeness. That's what Genesis 5.3 states. So everybody is born alive to the world, but spiritually dead to God. But before God could restore his life to us, he had to take away the sin which caused him to remove that life in the first place, thus Jesus dying on the cross. But when we believe in Jesus, when we accept his salvation that he offers, we are born again of the Spirit of God. That means that we, are we have the Spirit of God restored to us. God's life is restored to us. And in that restoration of life, that is salvation. So the whole world is forgiven, but the whole world is not saved because G Jesus dying on the cross doesn't save anybody. Nobody's going to hell because of their sins. They're going to hell because they're dead, spiritually dead. And what do you do with dead things, as my friend says? You burn them. So the issue we have to realize is that salvation is the restoration of the life of God. Now, when you become a Christian, when you're born again of the Spirit of God through faith in Jesus Christ, well, you experience the benefit of that forgiveness. And what's that benefit? That when you do sin, and we still sin even though we're saved, when you do sin, God no longer removes his life from you. He's not removing his life from you. So that life that you have, that his life indwelling you, is an eternal life because the forgiveness on the cross is an eternal redemption. That's the benefit of the death of Jesus Christ. That's the benefit of the cross. And then what we have to step over, the threshold we have to go over, the, the belief we have to have is this fear that saying that the whole sins of world, the, the sins of the world are, are forgiven, that is a that that scares us because we get thinking that, oh man, we're teaching universalism or or we're encouraging people to sin, or God saying it's okay to sin, and all that stuff, you know, and that's not the case. What it is saying is that God has removed the sins of the world so that there's nothing preventing you other than your belief from coming to him for salvation. That's how much he loves us, that he's done everything short of forcing you to be in his presence, forcing you to accept his life. That's love. He's still giving you the option to accept it, but he's not forcing you to do it. And he's taken away something that you can't overcome. You, you don't have a life to give, as we've talked about, that will pay for the, the penalty of sin. 
So God did it himself. And then once we enter across that threshold, realizing that that it's his life which is salvation, not just his death, that's what that's what encourages us to move forward and experience his a relationship with him instead of focusing on ourselves and trying a million different ways to try to get forgiveness for sins that he's no longer counting against us. And it makes going to the world a lot easier too, because instead of us always trying to get them to change their behavior, we can give them the life of God. And in that life, they'll realize that their behavior will change. That's what they need. They don't need to change the behavior. They need to, they need to be resurrected and God will change their heart. And when their heart is changed, your behavior follows. But we have to be able to say, hey, your sins are totally forgiven and God's not holding them against you. But he's offering you something better, which is himself through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his life. So the sins of the world are forgiven, but the world isn't saved because they need his life. I hope that encourages you and I'll be back soon with another video. Thank you.